just to start off, this is this isn't a deep question, but are there a few named schools, so to speak, of psychodynamic therapy that are most practiced or otherwise well known that might be singled out in the literature or do do therapists just advertise I am a psychodynamic therapist? I know. I mean people we've got some problems here, you, you know, this idea of, you know, schools and these you know, internecine disputes between theoretical models. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't personally don't have a lot of interest in, in that. I'm interested in, I'm interested in the kind of the, the bedrock of sound psychoanalytic or psychodynamic practice. So I, I'm not an Ian. I don't, I don't insert, you know, or I, I don't, I don't add a, you know, a suffix, so, you know, Ian to my name. I, I, I think, I think and work psychodynamically. There are about five major currents of psychoanalytic theory. And, um, the people I respect, right? Every psychoanalyst, every theory, every newer theory, you know, came about to address some limitations in the previous dominant theory. You know, it's like kind of like Cunian paradigms and paradigm shift. And, um, and, and then at some point got grandiose and made claims to be a total, you know, total universal theory of everything. That's not really how it works to, to me. Different theories put our focus on different aspects of, of, of mental life, right? They, they, they highlight certain things for our understanding. And which of those things is most relevant or salient to a particular patient depends on that patient. So I don't start with a theory and say, this is what I am. I'm an Ian. <laughs> um, I'm a, you know, I won't go into names. You know, everyone who comes to me get this, gets this. You see, how do I understand this particular person? Where's the action? Where's, you know, sorry to, you know, to use a sort of crude expression, but we have limited time. Oh, the person has an entire life ahead of them. Right? I mean, the goal is to do something in this work that is going to make a meaningful difference in their life or to shift the trajectory, the life trajectory that they're on in a way that hopefully makes things easier, better, more satisfying for them. And we have limited time to do it. So, you know, sort of, you know, crude economic metaphor, but where's the bang for the buck? What do I need to home in on? And, and that's where the theories become relevant, right? Because the theories address things that are going on, you know, that are relevant to everyone, but the action is going to be somewhere for one particular person. So, so one, if do you want me to sort sure, of walk through the... Sure. So one theory is, is, is what we call classical psychoanalysis, which is about, which is about drive and conflict. And it's morphed into what we call in the field ego psychology. But, but the idea is there are, are drives or impulses, desires, and there is something in us, goes back to being of two minds about things that, that opposes them and that we end up, you know, walking, working across purposes with ourselves. Right. And so that puts the focus on internal contradiction and conflict. And that's one lens to look, you know, to look through, right. There's, there's, there's drives or desires and there's defenses against them. And, you know, what happens out of that sort of dynamic, you know, that, that sort of, you know, dynamic tension. And that's where the world, the, the word dynamic came from in psychodynamics. Um, Another lens is we have internal representations of the world, specifically the, the, the relational world, internal working representations of self and others and relationships. That's called object relations. There's historical reasons why we say objects rather than people or relationships. But objects mean, for all intents and purposes for our discussion, objects mean people. How is our internal world populated? Who's in there? Who are we responding to? Who are we in relation to them? Right. So, uh, drive theory or ego psychology is, is one major current in psychoanalytic thought. Object relations, right? How is our internal world populated and how do we live out, right? Those internalized relationships. Object relations is another current. Um, Self psychology is concerned with how do we maintain 
a coherent and vital sense of self? What do we have to do to maintain a, a sense of coherence and a sense of, you know, sort of positive, you know, positive regard, positive, you know, positive sense of ourselves? How do we do that? You know, to what extent do we have internal, internal capacities, you know, to, to manage to, to feel all right about who we are as we move through the world, to what extent are we reliant or dependent on other people to, to sort of provide that function for us? I mean, so that's the domain of self psychology. And then with, uh, you know, the rise of this really so kind of parallel, the rise of, of, of postmodernism in, in other, you know, other areas of thought. Um, we have relational psychoanalysis, which says, you know, you can't look at a person, they call it a one person psychology. You can't look at a person in a vacuum. It's not a mind in isolation. We are born into a sort of matrix of relationships, you know, literally from the instant of, of, of birth. So how are we, we, you know, two people or many people, how are we mutually shaping and co-creating one another's experience? Right. And, um, they call that a two person psychology, right? So the original, you know, Freud's original psychoanalysis was relatively speaking, a one person psychology was concerned with intrapsychic processes within the mind of one person. A two person perspective shifts the lens to what we could say intrapsychic, in, interpsychic processes. What happens when we have people interaction in interaction with each other? Well, so I'm not a, any of these things. I'm in all of these things. It's, it's like a person comes into my, my office. I don't know them. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know why they're there. I invite them to tell me and I start listening. What am I hearing? What are the themes? What are the patterns? What, cause I mean, we don't listen randomly. We listen for, we listen for patterns. We listen for repetitions of the same theme across different areas of the person's life, right? across different times in their life, across different domains of their life. We listen for convergence. Are we hearing, are we hearing similar themes or patterns converging in different areas of their life? Right? There's a way that we listen right? to, to just kind of home in on what is this person's central psychological preoccupations that are causing difficulties for them that could be amenable to, you know, uh, it could be amenable to, to developing, you know, to, to shifting, to evolving through the work of the therapy.